In this video, we'll take a look at random forests. This will build on our previous, our other videos on that we, where we looked at the decision trees, classification and regression trees, and we also talked about bagging or bootstrap aggregation, and we will combine both of those with also the method of random subspaces to obtain random forests. So random forests are extremely simple technique and yet somehow they they have essentially state-of-the-art performance. Uh, there was a study done I'll just cite Caruana and Mikulescu Mitzil, I'm probably butchering that, 2006 they compared a large number of ten, or I guess 10 different binary classification methods on 11 different data sets and compare them using eight different performance metrics. Essentially, so the results were random forests came in second, topped only by boosted decision trees. So we haven't talked about boosting. Boosting is another aggregation technique. So, and third was bagged decision trees. So we talked about bagging and decision trees. And if you can, if you bag decision trees, you get bagged decision trees. That came in third. SVM was fourth. Uh, so essentially, and then down the line, neural networks, and then they compared a bunch of other stuff to just uh, just a regression, naive Bayes, but basically random forests were all the uh, all the aggregated tree methods were at were at the top. So that's a very interesting interesting fact. So how do what is random forest? How does how does this work? So I'll just outline the algorithm. It's very it's very simple. So we, we have, as usual, in the supervised setup, we've got these observed data points, some sequence of x's and y's, and let's call that d. And the algorithm is, so for i, as i goes from 1 to b, for some number b, we're going to construct b trees. And at each, for each tree, we'll do it in the following way. So we choose, choose a bootstrap subsample, a bootstrap sample from D. Call it DI from D. And this is just like what we talked about boot, uh, bagging. You know, you just sample N points with replacement uniformly from this set. And then using di, we construct tree ti using di, and we modify our previous tree tree growing procedure in the following way. And we do it by such that at each node, so at each at each node we're going to choose a random subset of the features. Choose a random random subset of features. And we'll consider only splits on those features that, that would split those features. And only consider splitting on those features. So on that subset, features from that subset. So we would choose, say, um, this is some number, we'll have, say M. Let's say we'll pick M features, and M is a, so there's two parameters here. B is going to be our number of trees, and M is going to be the number of features. And here, uh, so if the x's, so the x's were, you know, these are each xi is a point. Say it's say it's an RD, for example, or say or more generally just d-dimensional. It might be have categorical categorical inputs. So let's say xi has is d-dimensional. So m is some number less or equal to d, usually we want it, well, you know, less than d. d might be very large and m could be rather small. 
So we're going to choose this, you know, we'll choose some for each node, we choose some subset of features, and when we are considering all the possible splits, we're looking for the best split at that node, we will only search over that subset of features. So this is the this is what's called a random subspace. So this this subset of features defines some subspace of this d-dimensional this d-dimensional space. So this is a random subspace thing. Subspace. So we do this at each node. We follow our usual. Otherwise, we follow our usual tree construction procedure, and we get tree ti. And at the end, so after all this, we just do the usual aggregation thing. So we've constructed all these trees, and then uh, for our aggregated predictors, we would say, you know, take a majority vote, you know, give it a new x to classify, you know, take a majority vote over these these b over these b trees t1 through through tb or you could if they had if you were doing regression so this would be so majority vote for classification or you could average the probabilities or or just average or generally for regression So that's a very, very simple algorithm. Just essentially repeating this the decision tree construction, and the the what makes what gives this what makes this work is essentially it's the same reason that the the bootstrap aggregation works. The problem with using an individual tree is that it has high variance. It's very sensitive to the to the particular arrangement of the data points, and you might get unlucky. And uh, so each individual tree has high variance, but by averaging over an, an ensemble of trees, that's what this, these methods are also called ensemble methods, aggregation methods. So averaging over an ensemble of trees, you can reduce the variance of the, the overall final estimator. And therefore, you can reduce, so we'll see in the, the the from the bias variance trade-off, the the bias variance char characterization of performance of a classification or regression or estimator in general, that reducing the variance uh, can can lower your well in general it will lower your performance. I mean, low it will increase your your performance. It will lower your your error. So that's it. That's ran that's random forests. Random forests. Oh, so it, well, random forests were introduced. I should make clear by Bryman. Also introduced the classification and regression trees. So Bryman introduced a lot of very useful models. A very famous probabilist uh, or statistician, I should say.